Welcome back to the Global Business Report here in the Rise News. Nigeria's agriculture sector is vital to the nation's economy and youth, so is technology. Uh, with respect to agriculture, it's necessary not just for feeding the nation, but also for providing jobs to uh, Nigeria's youth. So the question is, how can technology bridge that gap? Joining us from our Abuja studio, uh, Rufus Idris, who is the country director, Nigeria Hyper International. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So uh, first question is, uh, you know, what is the role of, of innovation and technology in addressing uh, you know, food security challenges and how is, you know, Hyper plugging its way in there? Thank you so much and I'm happy to be here. Hyper International, an organization that is trying to end hunger and poverty in the world. And here in Nigeria, we have a major crisis in our hands uh, where the agricultural sector needs to be transformed in order to address the issue of food security, in order to create jobs, and also to be able to make a vibrant economy in the country. Uh, at this point, technology and innovation is very critical because these are enablers that have been used to transform other sectors in the past. If you look at Nigerian telecommunication industry, it's doing very, very well and it's booming. And one of the areas that is supporting the economy. If you look at what has happened also in Nigerian entertainment industry, technology and innovation has been used to revamp that particular sector. And it's very, very vibrant for young people and also bring in contributions to the economy of the country as well. If you look at what has happened in the financial sector of Nigeria as well, you see how technology and innovation have been used to transform that particular sector, the very, very vibrant one. It's been disrupted by technology and innovation. So we believe strongly that technology and innovation is a very strong tool that can transform the Nigerian cultural sector, like we've done in our entertainment sector, and also like we've done in our financial sector as well. All right, and what do you think should be done or is being done to leverage youth and technology to transform our agricultural sector? Importantly, we need to, first of all, be able to attract young people to see agriculture as a very attractive endeavor that they want to go into. Make it attractive for them, um, change the face of agriculture from what it used to be in the past, the old face of agriculture to the new face of agriculture. Show that agriculture can embrace mechanization, can bring in some equipment and modern technology and innovation to make it more uh, appealing as, as a dignified and fulfilling work for young people that want to play in the space. The other factor is also we need to also make the space uh, uh, enabling for them. We have to ensure that there are necessary infrastructure that can support the kind of innovation and technology that young people may want to bring into this space. And also we have to remove the stumbling blocks, the challenges that limit young people also from being able to bring that technology and innovation here, which sometimes is financing, sometimes being able to assess the infrastructure, the grid that required, Sometimes also being able to connect to the smallholder farmers and also the enabling environment, security, and also um, uh, something that guarantees their investment and business that shows the growth and the path going forward. Currently, we can see that there's a strong effort by the government and various other organizations trying to encourage them to go into agriculture. There have been programs where people are being recruited and they've been funded to do something in agriculture. But it, it, it goes beyond that. So what we're thinking and we're looking at is that we need to deliberately tap into the tech-savvy an entrepreneurial spirit of young people that consume more than half of our population in Nigeria uh, and, and get them the right um, kind of tools and support that mentor them to transform those business ideas and acumen, entrepreneurial spirit and innovation to something that solve major problem and crisis that smallholder farmers in Nigeria uh, are currently face. And like you know, smallholder farmers constitute 80% uh, of small of farmers in Nigeria and, and they contribute 90% of the food that we consume in the country. And that's not enough to even feed the population. So channeling their energy to bring those technology and innovation into agricultural space, identifying them like we're doing currently in Hairfire International with the uh, UT Nigeria Challenge. We're identifying key innovations and technology that young people are bringing up, bringing them into the sport, giving them financing to do this, and also giving them mentorship and the required business support that they can establish the businesses they can expand it, they can sustain it, and it can flourish over time. And also importantly, how do we integrate those businesses that they are bringing up into the main agricultural sector and the food system? So it's not just a, a, an aspirational idea, it's not just a passion, it's a huge business uh, endeavor that can flourish at the same time it's helping to solve major problems in the agricultural sector and it's helping the country to, to, to make its uh, uh, economy base more vibrant. First stuff. Uh, you mentioned, you know, hurdles earlier, financing uh, and so on and so forth. I want to ask you about power. Can technology thrive in Nigeria without power? Shouldn't power be in the in the conversation? 
So, so power, it's, it's also a big enabler that is required to, to front and support more technology and innovations. But sometimes innovation and technology might not be the gigantic or the big innovation that require a big power generator or that require the grid to survive. Sometimes it could be as simple as just something that helps a farmer to cultivate the land a little faster. That might not necessarily require the power uh, that we're talking about. But it, importantly, I know power is very, very important to support this. And I know there's a lot of effort to support power, but it's also diversifying the power space. Uh, we see a lot of young people now also coming up with innovation and technology that taps into solar power to support, it, to support things that we can do within this space. For instance, we have young people that are developing and cold hops that help to reduce post-harvest losses in various value chain. And this tap into the energy of solar power to be able to power that without relying on the grid. And this happened in areas that are off-grid in Nigeria. For instance, one of the smallholder farmers that are in the rural areas are completely off-grid. So we have to look for alternative ways to get to service them and do projects with them, even with power from solar, for instance. We also have areas where people are struggling with climate change impact where the, the amount of rain expected uh, yearly or during a, a farming season is not enough. So a lot of them require and now depend on irrigation to be able to either sustain the period of season of farming or to even do multiple season, uh, multiple farming around, 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 around the year. They require irrigation. So we've seen innovation technology around young people tapping through solar power to be able to create pumps, solar power pumps that have been powered without the grid. And this is helping in, in a couple of areas in the country to make farmers have access to water and be able to mitigate, again, the impact of climate change, which is mainly drought in some areas, and also be able to uh, uh, do all-season farming and increase their income beyond just doing when, when there's um, typical rain. All right. Thank you for that. Um, look, we're it's election season. Campaigns start next month. Um, do you have a roadmap for Nigerian leadership to follow to develop technology to aid our agric agricultural sector and, and for youth? Thank you so much. Yes, we do. So in the past, it has always been uh, staying in the room, having a chat board, having a brainstorming session, and design a roadmap to, to use in driving innovation technology and young people without the young people having a voice in that particular process. So what we've done at Haifa International is to carry out a detailed survey engaging young people across the country and across other African countries as well uh, to contribute to how, what would make agriculture appealing to them. What kind of innovation technology can we use to solve smallholder problems? Which ones can we really bring and build within the country uh, and build capacity of young people? So we have a strong youth study that we've done that looked into youth, agriculture, and innovation, and has been, been able to be used to create a roadmap that involves how to leverage technology and innovation and also how to engage young people if Nigeria must uh, transform its agricultural sector to be able to reduce and cut down on food importation as we currently import food worth about 22 billion US dollars every year to feed ourselves as a country. So I believe with this, we can produce and increase productivity in country and we can have more food to feed more people. We can create more jobs for the young people that are looking for jobs. And also in terms of food security, we can ensure there's food in the hands of everyone. For instance, Nigeria today, everybody's feeling the pinch, uh, even added to the, to the russia ukraine war, that added to more increase in, in price of food and inflation. A, a single family in Nigeria, for instance, now spend about 56.4% of their income on food. If we can address this with the roadmap, we believe Nigeria can address its food security challenges. We can integrate more young people into agriculture and we can get technology and innovation uh, to be the driver of transforming that sector itself. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, great work that you guys are doing at Haifa International, and wish you the best of luck. Uh, Rufus Idris, uh, Country Director of Nigeria, Haifa International, thank you so much for talking to us about technology, agriculture, and the youth. I really appreciate it. That's going to do it for the Global Business Report and our focus on technology. I am Rotus Odiri. Thank you so much for tuning in. Take care.